Okay, namaste and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 39th session of the Tuesday lecture series presented by Vigyan Prasad uh, for the Vigyan Prasad Network of Science Club called as VIPNET. I'm Dr. Nidhi Srivastava, project scientist from Vigyan Prasad. Welcomes you all. It's my privilege to welcome the uh, distinguished panelist of today's session, uh, Dr. Uh, Sri Sandeep Barwa, sir, uh, senior scientist from Vigyan Prasad. Dr. Arvind C. Ranade, uh, senior scientist and national coordinator of Vipnet clubs, Sri Sachin Narvaria, and Mr. Vipin Singh Rawat from the Vipnet team of Vigyan Prasad. I also welcome all the club members and the audience who have joined us for this session today. Thank you, everyone. So amateur radio service is a two-way community communication method where every, even a layman gets an opportunity to learn different aspects of radio communication technology. The mature radio stations act as a second line of communication when existing public or government communication links fail to act. It has played a vital role during disaster and natural emergencies such as earthquakes, tsunamis, cyclones, floods, and bomb blast by provi providing voluntary emergency communication in the affected area. So in today's lecture, we have an opportunity to learn this alternative mode of community communication called as amateur radio. And the speaker of today's talk is Sri Sandeep Barwa, sir, who is a senior scientist in Vigyan Prasad. The talk will be as usual of 40 to 50 minutes, followed by an interaction session. The audience and the participants can type their queries or doubts in the comment section of the YouTube box. Uh, once the talk is over, we'll take your questions. Now, we, without taking much time, I will invite uh, Arvind sir for uh, the welcome address and to introduce our today's speaker. Uh, over to Arvind sir. Uh, namaskar, uh, dhanyavad, Dr. Nidhi. As all of us in the whole of the world, we have been in our Vipnet Club, which is a very good thing. विज्ञान के क्षेत्र में कर रहे हैं उन सबको नमस्कार और आज के कार्यक्रम में आपका अभिनंदन करता हूं और जैसे हमारा यह प्रयास है एक निरंतर प्रक्रिया से आपके बीच में अलग-अलग विषय के जानकार आप लोगों के बीच में आकर उन विषय के बारे में हमें समझने की हम कोशिश करते हैं और इस मंगलवार व्याख्यान श्रृंखला में लगभग आज तक हमने लगभग 38 लेक्चर्स कर चुके हैं तो आज 39वां लेक्चर है और आज इस विषय और विषय के जानकार विज्ञान प्रसार के मेरे अपने सहयोगी ही हैं सो आई रियली फील लाइक नो हैविंग श्री संदीप बरुवा जी ऑन आवर विपनेट लेक्चर सीरीज प्लेटफार्म इज अ समथिंग व्हिच इज व्हिच वाज परहैप्स हाईली नीडेड एंड रिक्वायर्ड because the topic and the subject दैट ही डील्स विद इज समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑल द टाइम especially when we uh, look for the any natural disaster and then what a common man can play a role provided he uh, you know adopt or learn certain amount of techniques for the communication uh, in such kind of an emergency situations uh, and that is where i requested our my colleague sandeep ji to please come and uh, let know our vipnet club people across the country that what is the you know this uh, system of being an ham radio, how it work, and if at all we would like to be part of this active uh, amateur club member, uh, then it's not only during the disaster management, uh, but otherwise also this is one of the great hobby that one actually can pursue, uh, which gives us a lot of uh, scope for learning uh, the various aspect of the technology. At the same time, this also comes as a rescue for various purposes. So I'm very happy to introduce my own colleague. Uh, Sri Sandeep Barua, and I'm sure all of us who are working in a different part of the country for communicating and popularizing science uh, by your own way of dealing with the people. And I really find that most of you have been uh, greatly associated with Vigyan Prasar uh, for the enthusiasm for the work that you are uh, you know, doing and taking the science to the people. So Sri Sandeep Parva is uh, certainly cur work, uh, currently working with us in Vigyan Prasad and he is involved in the promotion of amateur radio, uh, popularly been known as a ham. However, Sandeep will never like to name them as a ham radio. So it's an amateur radio uh, for last 33 years. He is in the you know, uh, profession of taking or making amateur radio popular one. 
he received uh, his uh, radio communication license in 1989 which is a very long back when he was a student at assam agricultural university he came out with an activity guide book titled radio communication which is used by the amateur radio uh, club as a resource material and as a hands on guide guide book to prepare for amateur radio licensing examination conducted by department of telecommunication shri barwa is interested uh, with the job of promoting it as a tool of learning uh, uh, the practical aspect of radio communication technology to ensure a country wide alternative radio communication network for emergency preparedness and uh, response as well as uh, promoting amateur radio as do it yourself activity among the school children teacher and other community as well since his inception into vigyan prasar in 1998 he has carried out hundreds of outreach uh, uh, outreaching training workshops on the amateur radio one of the recent prom uh, prominent achievement was a guinness world record awarded by uh, the guinness book of world record uh, when this was been performed or conducted during the india international science festival 2019 at kolkata where largest number of students about 400 assembled the radio transmitter kit at a single go or maybe one can say simultaneously a uh, numerous technical workshop and training programs were conducted by him in many of the premier institutes uh, to generate awareness of the multifaceted applications of amateur radio and its social benefits so sandeep is being an expert for the various people uh, and the association as well including the administrative services people who need to know about this kind of an emergency services available for the common man as well as an institution of government who can come as a rescue or during the rescue operation so i think this is a very important aspect of our uh, technology of the, the day and uh, in spite of you know being with so much of advanced technology uh, the importance of amateur radio amateur radio still remains and very vital uh, for learning and uh, i also wish that all our club should also try to pursue for becoming an ham uh, as an amateur radio user of course sandeep uh, will be the right person to tell you uh, what the nitty gritties of this so i really privilege to introduce our uh, uh, sandeep barwa who is perhaps most of you also be knowing him for his passion and love for the subject that he pursue uh, so without taking much time mai sandeep ji ko zarur anurodh karunga ki hamare vipnet club ke sadasyon ke andar ek amateur radio ke bare mein ek jagrukta phaila kar hum isko kaise logon ke beech mein le ja sakte hain taki hamare vigyan ke club jo bharat mein bahut athak prayas karte hue logo tak vigyan lene ka kaam karte hain और इसी के लिए मैं संदीप जी को आमंत्रित करता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर निधि और मैं संदीप जी से आग्रह करता हूं ओवर टू संदीप धन्यवाद संदीप योर माइक इज म्यूट संदीप सो संदीप जी He seems to be uh, trying to get in. Ah, uh, Sandeep, uh, are you able to hear? Because you are my yeah, yeah, I am able to hear now. Yes, please. Uh, please okay, good afternoon to all. Uh, all the participants in this Vipnet Science Club uh, webinar series, where uh, today I am going to speak about uh, amateur radio. So, amateur radio uh, has already been introduced by uh, Arvind ji and Nidhi ji. That it's a uh, Uh, it's a system alternative community system community communication system uh, using radio waves so uh, uh, there are actually many things that we learn in our life uh, out of our passion so many th things we learn for example in a particular uh, branch of science if we want to learn something uh, we have to have some interest in that particular subject for example rana uh, arbinji is promoting um, astronomy so astronomy is a science and there are other people who may be not uh, professional astronomers but uh, people who may be uh, have, having an interest in astronomy so uh, we call them as uh, amateur uh, astronomers so similarly 
there are people all over the world uh, who are interested in, in the science of radio. So they are the radio amateurs. So that's why similar to, to your uh, radio astronomy, amateur astronomers, uh, there are amateur radio uh, operators um, and they actually uh, talk to the people all over the world using their own personal equipment. Just like an astronomer looks uh, to the sky uh, in search of uh, out of curiosity to know about the, our universe or the star uh, galaxies. Mm, they, they beam their uh, telescopes to the sky and, and uh, watch the sky. So that is to learn actually something on his or her own. Similarly, there are people you will find all over the world uh, who use radios uh, to communicate. And it is not about only communicating to the other side of the world um, using a radio, but to learn the technologies. So, um, so, um, so unless we um, do it on our own, let's call do it yourself. For example, if a student, if he makes his own radio transmitter and receiver, um, how would he uh, transmit his signal? So that is why uh, we have a system called amateur radio. Uh, the government allows an individual uh, to get a license after passing an exam. Uh, it is a hundred marks exam. And accordingly, the government has devised a syllabus. Uh, so that government uh, is convinced that a person who is going to get operate his own homemade transmitter or receiver is proficient enough, have the necessary uh, skill and knowledge to operate a radio communication equipment safely without uh, without disturbing the other prof professional uh, radio communication service provider. For example, our smartphone, this mobile phone is also a radio device. Because it, it doesn't have any wire connected to the anywhere. So this is a radio device only. But we don't have to know anything about what is inside it or uh, how our communication is taking place. Because all this is being taken care of uh, by the professional engineers uh, to whom we have uh, we have purchased our um, their service uh, for our use uh, for our day-to-day -day utility communication. So they have been maintaining their network, this whole uh, internet. Uh, the optical fiber cable network. So they are robust communication network maintained by professional people, but they are doing it, of course, uh, with some motive also. Of course, they're providing us their service to the nation and to us, all the common people, but we are paying something to them for their service to us. So they are the professional service provide providers. We are taking help of them uh, to establish our uh, communication. I can send a message instantly to anywhere in the world without worrying anything, without putting up an antenna or without making my own effort to set up the system. We just buy it and uh, uh, there you go, you can do it. But uh, unlike this smartphone, amateur radio, many people think is obsolete. It is, it is not actually. Amateur radio is as old as the uh, radio communication when it started. Since the start of the Henrik Harge when he invented uh, the electromagnetic wave, Mm. After that, there are many people, hundreds and thousands of people all over the world who became interested in radio. And those days, it was not regulated by the government. So many people started building their uh, own equipments. So when they started building equipments, why they started to build the equipment? Because out of curiosity. Out of curiosity, we do many things out of our passion. For example, a person is passionate about uh, singing. Uh, he would definitely pursue his passion to find out how to sing and he would feel happy singing or maybe uh, giving happiness to others by singing. So it is his skill, um, which is uh, actually he is trying to uh, hone his skill uh, in singing. I'm just giving an example. Similarly, there are other people who want to be technically self-reliant, technically self-reliant in communication. What we call now it is, is Atmanirvar in Hindi, Atmanirvar. So if I want to be, uh, become Atmanirvar, self-reliant in my communication, if my this smartphone is not there, and if the commercial service provider uh, stops their service, then what I shall do? So I, I, I need to be Atmanirvar. I need to be self-reliant in my communication. That is why uh, what we radio amateurs do. So it was long back as uh, Aurobindji has told you that I, I got my radio communication license long back in 1988. Actually, I, I was doing it since 1983, 
but because those were the early early days when information of course information was there internet was not there in our days internet came only became popular only in probably 1998 1999 like that so before the coming of the internet information were abundant because we used to read books we without books i think our life is incomplete we used to read books now internet has come so we can easily grab the uh, information from out of the internet easily we can get something so nowadays it is not at all a problem for a person if you just heard today from me that amateur radio so you just google it and find a lot of whole lot of information and study material and do it on your own but in our days uh, we have to self study that is why we call it do it yourself in fact reading a book is also do it yourself because i am learning something by reading a book for example uh, in our days we have to read a book like this uh, this is a book american radio relay league handbook this is an amateur radio book and this is all about radio radio technology radio physics how to make an antenna how to make a transmitter so all these things are science actually it is totally related to science a subject where an individual when get introduced uh, gets to learn a lot of things about the radio how our radio signals radiated from an antenna in which direction the uh, signal is going and what what are the different type of antennas uh, what are the different type of technologies for example i am just now talking i am talking and my voice is going through this uh, cell phone network smartphone uh, network uh, through some optical fiber cable through the internet technology but our my voice can also go to other part of the world uh, using radio wave using a device like this so for that i don't have to depend on the internet so in that case i am at maneuver suppose my internet is not working i am just now going to show you uh, talking to hyderabad actually and it was in 2004 yes 2004 uh, the tsunami happened a uh, tsunami happened in andaman and nikobar island and some of my ham radio friends amateur radio friends when they are uh, to operate their radios because some people enjoy operating from different exotic places so uh, they try to see how their radio signals are going to different parts of the world and and uh, those type of experiments using different antennas that time the tsunami happened and uh, i instantly got uh, con connected to andaman through my own personal radio so so this is radio to tcd see uh, i am now getting a call on this my radio <clears throat> yeah view to tcd uh, good evening kindly stand by uh, uh, mr pradeep kindly stand by i will give you a call over i give you tcd returning raja sir raja main stand by karunga yeah thank you so much view to tcd view to any standing by so you see uh, right now this is just an example someone gave a call on my radio and uh, this radio probably i can just take it a little nearer to this radio so you can see uh, this radio uh, this is called a very high frequency uh, vhf base station very high frequency uh, vhf base station suppose in case of an emergency situation uh, the, uh, there is a very large scale earthquake in uh, new delhi the cell phone network may be getting to goes down and some of the cell phone towers may be clogged uh, or maybe uh, maybe breaking down or there are different scenarios you can expect in a very large scale disaster and in that case because i have my own communication system ready in my house this is my house radio home station uh, with which i can talk to people who also have their own radios uh, in their um, houses in their residences or maybe in their offices for example right now uh, i am go going to show you a demonstration by talking to national balbhavan national balbhavan has an amateur radio club station just like vigyan prasar has an amateur radio club station and we have a in fact relay station for relaying of signals uh, from uh, from uh, handheld equipment like cell phone towers are relay stations similarly hands also run the radio amateurs also run relay station our began prasad is providing that help to the amateur radio community by running a relay station so right now i am communicating with him using our relay station 
सो लेट मी ट्राई गिविंग अ कॉल टू हिम टू नेशनल बाल भवन स्टेशन अभी यू तो टीसी की विक्टर इनिफॉर्म तो टेंगो चार्ली टेंगो दिस इज विक्टर इनिफॉर्म तो माइक इनिफॉर्म तो गुड इवनिंग टू यू मनोज जी वेरी नाइस टू हियर यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर रिप्लाइंग बैक टू माय कॉल सो हाउ डू यू कॉपी मी नाउ अभी यू तो रेडियो uh probably it is going live on youtube also so i won't hold you now thanks for helping me in this voice communication demonstration 73 and i give us give us give us one to my presentation monoji so nice of you 73 by from now take care view to dct at national bal bhavan with to talk to my team from the now here 73 by from now uh, 73 sir have a nice day over Yeah, 73. Have a nice day to you also. Bye. So, uh, so you you saw uh, that I uh, 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 so connected to him. There is no intermediary network provider who facilitated this communication it is point to point my signal is going to the relay station at noida sector 62 for which i have to raise my antenna high because no, no, initially it was at c24 that time even i i could actually access the repeater using a handheld radio like this but now as the repeater has gone far away uh, to noida i found out my own way because for that i have to uh, i have to upgrade myself i cannot no longer use a small radio uh, from inside my house uh, but instead of that i have to use a bigger radio just now i show you so that there is more power and i have an antenna on the roof uh, and that signal has gone to uh, initially gone to noida sector 62 relay station from there it has gone to uh, your national bal bhavan that way our network is established and in a particular frequency there may be 10 20 people who can talk at the same time for example when i am talking all the 10 people would be listening to me so in our uh, amateur radio it's called round table uh, it's not exactly round table conversation we are called we call it nay in the night through our uh, vigyan prasar relay station it has a call sign for example um, all all the radio amateurs they have see uh, th- this is uh, this is my call sign uh, this is this is called a call sign v u 2 m u e v u 2 v u 2 m u e it is just like a car number plate for example if i i, I am listening to my radio a long distance radio a long distance radio and i i heard someone yeah i am just going to give you show you Uh, Victor is from to Romeo Bravo India Hyderabad this is Victor is from to Mike is from to India how do you copy over Victor is from to Romeo Bravo India this is Victor is from to Mike is from to do you copy Uh, there was some qrn some interference uh, some interference uh, give my report once again ma'am your report is 5 and 8 5 and 8 and you can probably see in youtube also uh, it is being live streamed to youtube so you can see your uh, listen to your audio in youtube link i have sent to you ma'am view to romia bravo india view to my uniform ago Hello, 
Roger, Roger. Victor uniform to Romeo Bravo India. This is Victor uniform to Mike uniform at New Delhi returning. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming to my call. Uh, your heart, heart loud and clear, five and nine. Some QRM is there on the frequency. I don't know. So thank you. Thank you very much. I don't won't hold you because I am uh, uh, I'm giving the session to the students online. Uh, I just wanted to show them the uh, 20 meter radio contact, long distance contact. Uh, so I call it a day. 73 won't hold you now. Uh, probably you can find some DX station uh, probably on the frequency. Bye for now, ma'am. So nice of you. View to Romeo Bravo India. View to Mikey from Echo. Over. Someone is transmitting, causing QRM, the station causing QRM kindly QSY. The station causing QRM kindly QSY. Uh, yeah, I hope they are able to listen to you. Uh, I hope they are able to listen to you because my laptop is a little away. Uh, inbuilt uh, microphone I am using. Probably that's why. Uh, let me let me ask them after taking the over. They they definitely would be able to hear you. So 73. Have a good day. Stay safe and take care. Victor uniform to Romeo Bravo India. Victor uniform to Mike uniform echo now here and QS showing to my computer. 73. Bye for now. Uh, Ma'am, later, later, uh, after probably half an hour, after half an hour, over. Okay, okay, half an hour, I'll take you out now, thank you, probably 73, 73, bye for now, view to Romeo Bravo India, uh, view to Mike Informico here at New Delhi. So, uh, you can, uh, you saw a just live demonstration uh, that 24 into 7, when our radio is on, uh, we, we can get connected to actually anybody anywhere in the world uh, using our own radio communication system. So for that, uh, when I started in 19, 1983, um, as uh, Arabinji has already told you that uh, we introduced uh, building of electronic uh, radio transmitters uh, during the India International Science Festival 2019 at Kolkata. And students uh, made a small transmitter and they could assemble it and they, they could actually listen to their own voice um, on their radios. For example, for that, uh, we we came out with, uh, uh, we provided them a, a kit and this is this is a kit very popular. Uh, it is not obviously uh, developed by me. Um, so uh, this is a very popular kit. Uh, and this is what at India International Science Festival 2019, the kids assembled. And this particular uh, board, it's called a, this is called a, actually this is called a breadboard, where the electronic components can be uh, inserted. Electronic component component can be inserted uh, according to the circuit diagram. For example, uh, we have provided the circuit diagram of the kit uh, in our EduSet uh, booklet. This booklet, this is the circuit diagram of that uh, particular transmitter, and. The 400 students, in fact, participated, out of which 289 students um, could make it, assemble it on a breadboard. And why this is called a breadboard? It is very interesting that in America, uh, there are people uh, who, during breakfast, uh, it is called breadboard, bread, that is the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in the morning, when we uh, take breakfast, uh, we, uh, uh, the Americans, they used to make bread on wooden boards, certain wooden boards, and they uh, they thought that uh, to make some uh, electric gadgets on those wooden boards. So they used some metallic connectors uh, uh, on that uh, uh, on those wooden boards, bread boards, they, which they used to make bread in the morning. And later on, uh, uh, this particular type of uh, uh, board ha has came to know, uh, has to be uh, has came, uh, come to be known as breadboards. So that's how this originated, breadboard. Now you can assemble uh, it in a different way. For example, this is the breadboard and this is called a general purpose printed circuit board where we assemble the kit. Uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, difficult, but through learning, we can do it. It can be chosen into a board. So it does work. So I'll show you uh, how, uh, actually how our uh, initiation into ham radio 
or amateur radio, how we initiate. For example, when we introduce amateur radio, people always ask the price of the, how much would cost be involved. Actually, that question doesn't come at all. Uh, when we start this, when I started this uh, long back in 1983, I also assembled a small transmitter like this only and participated uh, in a science exhibition in an engineering college. And then I came to know from an engineering student, uh, he asked me, are you a radio amateur? I said, no, what is that? He also said, I also don't know, but there are some people uh, who make their own big radios and they can talk to the world using their own personal radios. Then I thought then that that is something must be very interesting that if I also can talk to the world and come to know people whom I don't know. So it is not like telephone. So it is something interesting. See, see now, now you see, this is, this is a radio and this radio is receiving my signal on 87.5 megahertz. Uh, this is the kit. This is very near, no? That's why the feedback is taking place. If I, if I transmit, hello, 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 hello. Test one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five. Hello, hello, hello. So, so you see, uh, this this small uh, gadget uh, could produce the radio frequencies which my voice is modulated, uh, being used using this small microphone and it is transmitted uh, uh, with a small wire. So radio wave needs to be actually radiated for which we need a radiating device. This small wire is actually radiating the radio frequency signal and then radio frequency signal is modulated with my voice, uh, which is picked up by this uh, small radio. So that way I started, but it is one way only. Like uh, we listen to the uh, FM radio stations. FM broadcast band radio station. When we tune into a FM broadcast band station, we cannot interact. But here, interesting thing, this is educative, alternative community communication, because uh, we get to know a whole lot of people all over uh, the world, not only India, all over the world. For example, uh, people who have their own radio communication licenses in Delhi, I, I know uh, everybody and I talk to them uh, using my personal radio every day every uh, in the night also i talk maybe when i feel like just like i carry my uh, this phone i carry my uh, personal uh, radio also so uh, it is like my personal thing like the smartphone and this uh, smart, uh, this uh, walkie talkie or the handheld transceiver now you see there is something very interesting if you look at the keypad of this walkie talkie uh, it is very common nowadays you can see even with uh, the policeman or maybe the, an army official army personnel or maybe a security guard even and they also use this type of radios but they use it entirely for a different purpose for the official communication not for any learning of things they, they don't need to learn anything about radio communication but our main in intention is to learn it uh, learn it the different technologies now you see this particular keypad uh, it is called a dtmf keypad dual tone multi frequency so when we dial uh, from our smartphone uh, this also has a DTMF keypad, and many people do, don't know. In fact, most of the people don't don't know that amateur radio operators are the first people uh, to use uh, this DTMF keypad. Long back, probably 40, 50 years back, when smartphones didn't exist at all, it's, it's smartphones didn't exist at all during those times. So the Americans uh, they thought if uh, we need to communicate, if we go out, how to talk to my wife or how to talk to my kid or my uncle or my dad. So they used to make these radios and they used to talk to them using walkie-talkie. So American government then legalized it and started giving them license. So following America, all over the world, the government says, okay, okay, these guys are very useful for the society. We should give them permission to use these radios so that they can talk on their own without depending on anyone. So that's why we need to also uh, study the rules and regulation because we have many uh, stringent rules and regulation that we need to follow so that uh, we abide by the rule of the land so we don't break uh, any uh, any uh, we don't do any illegal things using uh, while operating a radio now uh, i am talking about the dtmf keypad a dtmf keypad in fact i i can dial someone dial someone using this radio uh, so I'm just going to show you another thing here. Uh, 
like some people sometimes ask, okay, can we dial to a particular uh, person like uh, in a smartphone? Because they have seen the smartphone and they can dial, uh, but we didn't see the smartphone in our, in our days. But we know about the DTMA of things, what is dual tone multi frequency. When a, we actually use our smartphone to give a call to someone, we send the two tones by pressing a particular button. For example, if I want to give a call on my smartphone, so in this smartphone also, you can see this keypad. Earlier days, when I press one, it will produce, this is a DTMF one, one, two tones will be produced, which at the other end, the uh, through the network will identify the particular number. So my number will be would be decoded, <coughs> uh, decoded. In fact, we hams can in fact sometimes decode a dial, dialing number also by listening to these tones with DTMF decoder. So for example, if if my my number nine eight double one six eight six five seven two needs to be dialed uh, using this radio, uh, how 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 you hear it on the radio? You see. You will hear some tones on, on the radio actually. So when I press this, uh, these things, no, uh, it has transmitted certain tones, and that way that radio listen to those tones and can in fact identify a particular station. Now, if I connect this radio to the internet through optical fiber network. In fact, I can dial a particular ham also, particular ham in another part of the country. That is called a gateway. This radio, this radio would work like a gateway to the other part of the world through optical fiber network. For example, in an emergency situation, suppose our local uh, network uh, is down. Our local network within Delhi is down, but a particular node station uh, is connected to internet, which is not down. And I immediately want to contact to some other part of the world uh, using radio. So that way I can give a send a DTMF tone. And in USA, it is legal. Actually, in USA, a ham in India, it is still not legalized to give a mobile phone call or to call a, a mobile phone user using our radio. So that is not allowed in India till now. There are many things India in India it is not allowed because if they, probably the government may have an idea uh, may, may be in doubt that if we allow this uh, people will stop using uh, the phones then how would they uh, generate the revenue how would the government or the service providers because uh, you see when we use our radio we don't have to give any money to anybody because it is our educational activity for learning so that's why government uh, uh, we have to follow certain regulation and in india we are not legally allowed to dial someone through a station connected to the public switching telephone network but we have the capability we can we can telephone patch a radio uh, to the uh, mobile phone or the landline network and give a, a telephone call smart uh, to a landline or a mobile phone from these radios so that capability we have and it is there since a long time but there is another very simple uh, selective calling for example many people ask me after seeing these uh, things because they are using smartphones, no mobile phones. You are using smartphones for a long time. But we started long back. They asked me, uh, can we call a, uh, another person like a mobile phone? Uh, but it is yes and no. It is not like telephone calling to another another radio. For example, suppose there are two persons, these two persons. And I want to, uh, I am not interested to talk to anyone except one person. So that two person can actually, uh, uh, program their radios so that the other person will listen to listen to that only that particular person when the other person uh, gives a call. Uh, all other conversations would be muted. Nothing would be heard. I'm just going to show you.
uh, there is some technical issue we will resume the session soon Uh, yeah, I think there is some technical issue. Uh, he is joining again, so please wait for some time. Yeah, the lecturer is out. Okay. Yes, sir. He is joining again. Actually, a little technical issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, the speaker is joining again. Uh, he has just called me. So within a few minutes, he will join again. Uh, by the time he will join, if you have some questions, you can type it in the chat box of the YouTube. Uh, we will take your questions after the session is over. So whatever you uh, have in your mind, you can ask the expert. Okay, sorry, there was a power cut. So you see anything can happen actually uh, in a real life situation. Uh, there was a power cut. So my uh, modem uh, switched off. I didn't have a, don't have a, an inverter system in my house. So it took some time to come back online again. So similar situation may happen even during an emergency also. For that, of course, I have my solar panel uh, to become self-reliant and my battery those things are there, but I have I have used uh, I use those things only for my radios and not for my this system. So I need to uh, repair my invite inverter. So now you see uh, I told you about giving a selective calling. So uh, if if I uh, give a press to talk, this is called a press to talk button. If I press only if I press this button, this radio will sound a dial tone um, uh, on its speaker. So you see uh, that dial tone that the, it 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 it, uh, it reminded me that uh, uh, it alerted me that there is a call from uh, someone for which these two radios are programmed. That is called selective calling. Uh, so selective calling technology is there in our radios also. So only a particular station we can program our radio to be listened. Now after listening to the dial tone, uh, we we can give a call and talk to talk to that person. See, I am now transmitting locally here, and my audio is hard here locally. So 
along with the dial tone. The dial tone I can set for five rings or seven rings like that. So that is uh, some sort of uh, your you can call it selective calling. But selective calling is much more complicated than this one. Mm, so I'm not going into detail about that uh, about the selective calling. Now you might be thinking that in our days of the internet, so many sophisticated things are there. Uh, like we do navigation. Uh, we, we can call a taxi, Ula or Uber uh, from our smartphone using the uh, send our nav navigation, uh, means our position information. But those things we hands already had long back. People only came to know about uh, when they started using these apps like Ula or Uber apps. But those technology we already had uh, in our radios. So I'm going to show you one such technology. Mm. I'm just going to share my screen now. So this technology is called uh, uh, automatic packet reporting system. It uses a G GPS uh, device uh, uh, inbuilt into the radio. For example, a GPS may be inbuilt into the radio. If a GPS is not there, we can provide an external GPS connection uh, to the radio to send our position and text messages without uh, depending on other service providers. So suppose there is an emergency situation in Delhi. So how we visually, graphically, like in geographical information system, GIS, we come to know the other person is where uh, we can track them in real time, actually track them and we can send messages to each other using our own radio waves, not depending on any smartphone or anything. So that thing I'm going to show you. Uh, so BPNG Mera uh, display uh, visible in a laptop. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes sir. Huh. So you can see this is a map uh, which is not a Google map. This is a map which I have scanned uh, from a book. I think it is uh, from a HR book, the two big pages I have scanned. And in Adobe Photoshop, I combined two images. Then I made this uh, map actually almost uh, calibrated. You don't need a Google map. This is an offline map where you can see where a person is in real time because one of my radio is now connected uh, to the computer. Uh, you can see this USB hub and this radio, this radio is connected. This radio is connected to my computer. So this USB hub and this particular software, uh, this particular software that you have seen can detect the radio signal and decode it actually. Decode the signal uh, if I press a button from my radio. For example, uh, we can even set up a network, our own, it is called digital repeater network. And you see International Space Station is one interesting thing that we all, uh, people who are interested in radio communication should know that International Space Station, which is orbiting with astronauts on board at an altitude of 400 kilometer, and it is orbiting at a very high speed, 25,000 kilometer per hour, and it has a an amateur radio station on board uh, that international space station, and we hams can communicate to the, those astronauts because those astronauts before going to the space, Na NASA trained them uh, on amateur radio. Even our Kalpana Sawla, she was a ham. Then our Sunita Williams, she is a ham. So that means they uh, they got their radio communication license before becoming uh, before becoming an astronaut. So NASA actually considered amateur radio as one of the important backup communication system. Mm, so that in case of other, they have all different channels for official communication, but they also maintain the amateur radio communication system because of its uh, necessity in case of an emergency situation. So we can in fact uh, talk to astronauts and NASA run a program called ARIS, Amateur Radio International Space Station, under which uh, a particular school <coughs> can apply for a radio contact with the astronaut. Mm -hmm. Similar contact we organized for Hipnet Science Club in Mirat also. And another for Gujarat Science City also, we organized from Vikan Pasar. In uh, Gujarat Science City, they talked to uh, Sunita Williams. And, uh, and one for Basan Valley School in New Delhi. So during those uh, contacts, 
the students can talk to the astronauts using ham, ham radio, amateur radio, directly uh, to the space station. Uh, we, when the international station fly, we, we have prediction programs. So when it flies over Delhi, so we can just beam our antenna. For example, I'll show you an antenna. So you, you can see uh, this is an antenna. And you can see one radio there I have connected. And this antenna can be actually uh, rotated. This can be rotated. It can be rotated uh, and it can be made your azimuth elevation wise. Uh, I'll just show you. Uh, Sandeep sir, can I stop sharing your screen because the... Uh, okay, 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 you stop the sharing screen, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is visible, no? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so you see uh, this antenna I have installed on a tripod. Like uh, the astronomers, radio astronomers, amateur astronomers, they also install their telescopes uh, uh, onto some mount. So here you can see one radio here, and this radio is connected. And these, these are measuring taps. Actually, when we make antenna, uh, we need to measure the different elements of the antenna according to the design by the engineer. And this is called a Yagi antenna. And this antenna is designed uh, in Japan in 1920. Imagine in 1920, Professor Yagi and Professor Oda, they were two uh, professors who designed this antenna and we are still using it. During the earlier days when uh, the Dudersen was transmitting on your local frequencies, uh, we have those folded Yagis, that's called folded Yagi like this. Uh, we, old people, they have the experience of those Yagis. Here, this is this is not a folded Yagi. So this this is a Yagi antenna, which you can actually pin to the uh, satellite or the international space station. When it passes over Delhi, uh, you can beam the antenna. So you need to beam the antenna actually like this. Uh, so, uh, so these are the things that we need to learn. We need to learn. And I have created a, a meter here. I have created a meter here. You can see a meter there. And if I uh, if I transmit, you can see the meter. I can see the strength. Strength actually. I can see the strength. You see, uh, this is a directional antenna. So to transmit my signal, if I transmit from the back of the antenna, uh, it will not receive anything. I have to transmit from the front, this front side of the antenna. This antenna is directional. So it doesn't radiate its, its signal to the back of the antenna, but it will radiate the signal to the front of the antenna only. That's why this particular antenna is being used for efficiency. Sometimes we need, we may need to beam, beam our signal only to a particular direction. Uh, not in all the direction. So if in that case, this antenna is very, very useful because it will radiate its signal only in a particular direction. Now, if I, if I transmit something, say from, you see when I brought this radio to the front, You can see the meter here, needle, needle here. So that way I can get to know an idea about the strength of the signal and maximize the direction of my antenna uh, for, to the signal from where it is coming. So these are the different things uh, that we get to learn when we become a ham and uh, we can talk, uh, we can use this for the low earth orbit uh, satellite phone. There are so many, 
satellites uh, you will find uh, in amateur radio uh, i think the video is freezed the video video is freezed i think yeah, yes sir it's not moving only antenna is okay i i just disconnect and restart it Okay, now it has come back, no? Yes, sir. Is it okay? Okay, okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I was talking about the International Space Station and satellite tracking. So there are many things that we can do now about text messaging and uh, position plotting of a particular station. So that I am going to share that screen here. Uh, for example, suppose I am carrying this radio uh, in my car, and through our relay station, I wanted to show someone on the map, suppose it is an emergency operation center, but ham radios, ham radio operators don't wait for any emergency situation. We operate our radios all the time, and that is how we keep ourselves uh, not only abreast of the technology, up to date with the technology, but also preparedness. Because we operate our radios all the time, that we, uh, our radios are being maintained. For example, uh, in an emergency situation like a satellite phone, we don't use satellite phone regularly. Right now, if there is an emergency situation, nobody in Delhi for any emergency communication using a satellite phone. Even the uh, register managers also, they are also not using it. So they are, who knows, their uh, radios, uh, their satellite phones may not be charged immediately to activate. But in our case, it usually doesn't happen because we don't keep just one or two radios. We may be having two, three radios and extra battery packs also. So all those preparedness is, actually what we learn from our own experience for our own need so that uh, at a particular time if i wanted to talk to someone that my battery is uh, ready my battery is not discharged so uh, we every day we have been maintaining now suppose uh, there is an emergency control room uh, this particular share i again go back to my share here now i press the button uh, a button on my computer uh, this uh, this handy, this call a handy. So you see, uh, this handy has a GPS global positioning system receiver inbuilt. So if I'm outside my house, then only it will be able to receive the signal from the navigation satellite. Of course, it receives the navigation signal from three uh, navigation satellite, at least minimum of three satellites run by the United States Department of Defense, US DOD, for which this GPS receiver, receiver is compatible. And our phone, smartphone also has a GPS receiver. So smartphone also has a GPS receiver. And many people confuse GPS with 
GPRS, like in earlier days, uh, our mobile phone companies in their manual used to write GPRS, General Packet Radio Service. That packet radio service is different. We HAMS also have the packet radio communication system, and that is how uh, we utilize the GPS. And that GPS signal should come from the satellite, and that way through triangulation, it will tell exactly where this particular radio is. Now, if I press this button, instead of transmitting my voice to this radio, which is connected to my computer, uh, you, you can share a map will change. Let me press the button. You see the map got changed. So you see, I actually deliberately simulated a situation where I fed my longitude and latitude information to this radio. Manually, I can feed it. If I am inside my house, wanted to tell someone that I'm here at this particular time and I'm not because you, you your GPS would work only when you are outside your house from the satellite three satellites you need to receive the signal then only you can navigate similarly but I am inside my house but this is a simulation I have simulated the situation that my car and this is called as, even our Wi-Fi networks also we know SSID we hams are familiar to SSID Secondary station identification. This is called SSID uh, VU2MUE-9. This is my secondary station identification, and this is my house uh, primary station identification VU2MUE. Now you see there are so many information automatically ported here on the map, and it is telling me I have reported one minute ago the longitude, latitude, then your bearing. Bearing means from my house in which direction direction uh, the car is located and distance distance is also there 4.8 kilometer status something i have written priority then course and speed because my radio i am inside a car but my car is not moving so in which direction the car is going that is not there course is zero course means direction of the car speed speed is zero but if i am really really mobile and I have written some comment on my uh, this radio demo at Red Cross National Headquarters, New Delhi, when I was giving some demonstration. So these are all automatically, without asking anything, without talking on the radio, stations would be getting plotted, uh, whoever uses the similar technology. Now, you, know, you don't have to ask me where I am. You see me where I am. And you, you came to know it is two minutes ago. If it is... I reported 30 minutes ago, it would be coming 30 on the map. Now you can see it is written two minutes. After 30 minutes, it will become 30 minutes. Now suppose I want to send a message uh, to, to this particular uh, radio. I can do that using the other radio. Send message. So uh, is the message display, uh, message display is visible, BPNG? Message display is the message display visible? Yeah, earlier it was uh, there that some readings and all that things uh, we can see that. No, no, a white white screen is coming or not? No, sir, the map is coming right now. Only map? Yeah. Okay, I think new share probably. Is it now visible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. one message, yes. Yeah. So you can, yeah. Now I am going to text message to the radio from my computer, or I can do that from another radio also uh, without connecting to radio. But right now one radio is connected to my computer, and from my computer, I, suppose this is my control room with a very big display. I am watching everybody. Who is where is the ambulance? Where is the rescue camp? Or where is the crash site? Uh, so if somebody knows that there is an accident or a crash site. Immediately, the helicopter would know this is 4. Point, this is 4.2 kilometer, and it is in the direction 82 degree. So it will automatically be able to know everything without asking anybody. This is, that is why it is called automatic packet reporting system. And this technology is there for since long time. This software was developed in the year 2000. So it is almost 22 year old technology. You see that hams have been using, which people, common people, now came to see only. Uh, when they want to book an Ola or Uber taxi. So technology has evolved actually out of different experimentations being done by these radio engineers, electronic engineers, computer scientists, and those are the people behind who are working and developing technologies. But of course, ham radio 
allows just like amateur astronomy, ham radio allows an ordinary person to get involved to learn the technology. That is how I don't know much details about these, all these things, but the person who has developed this thing, he definitely knows what he was doing. But I'm just user of the technology, amateur radio technology, just like a common a, a layman who maybe want to learn your uh, radio astronomy. Similarly, uh, I'm using it. So suppose I want to take messages. Now you see that uh, this particular radio, uh, you can see on the display, the text message here, uh, and the whole message is stored. This message is stored, and I can send a message uh, from this radio also. So, uh, or I can just show you clearly message this. So uh, you have to scroll this screen actually. So this message is getting stored uh, on your radio. So you can say, again, let me show you. Yeah, hello. Uh, this is a hello. This is a test. Okay, transmission. So there are actually lots of messages already stored in my this particular radio, which I can later on see the messages uh, on the. Radio, radio display. So that is another technology which is very, very useful uh, for uh, handling emergency situations. I mean to say uh, the technology that we can utilize without a smartphone network uh, using our computer connected to the radio. We can even transfer uh, different type of files from computer to computer uh, using our radio connected. That is called packet radio data communication. So data, data communication is one of the important aspect of amateur radio where we experiment a lot of things. Uh, uh, then picture transmission also we do. Right now, uh, I have not set up my picture transmission thing. So even nowadays what happens, if you have a smartphone, there are so many apps developed by ham radio operators that you can use your smartphone as an input device uh, to, to connect to an ordinary radio, a small low pass radio. You can just hook up your radio to the smartphone and without using the cell phone network, you can transmit a picture or just now I showed you the text transmission. All those things you can utilize the smartphone for, for your amateur radio experimentation. So there are lots of possibilities. We in fact transmit pictures uh, from radio. You can just click a picture and suppose in an emergency situation, there is no cell phone network. You just uh, hook your uh, this audio jack to your uh, radio and transmit the picture. It would be decoded by the app without cell phone network. The app would decode that. So International Space Station, they have a program to transmit picture from space. So de they uh, declare when the event would start. And in many European countries, small kids, they used to receive picture from International Space Station on their, these small walkie talkies, radios connected to some computer or maybe smartphone. Nowadays, the smartphone has uh, actually enabled a lot of things people can do very easily without uh, using a laptop, a big laptop. So even a picture can be decoded. That probably I can demonstrate later. I have not prepared those things for today's demonstration. 
then then yeah many people may be uh, okay let me just We you to Romeo Bravo India, we you to Romeo Bravo India, we you to Nike. We you to Romeo Bravo India, we you to Nike. So actually, I was trying to connect to Hyderabad, not through this uh, long distance radio, but using my this uh, local VHF radio, which is connected. To a node station which is connected to the internet, so my voice can even go to Hyderabad through internet also. That is VOIP. VOIP also we have integrated. If some station is there at other side of the world, I can give a call using VOIP through a node, an internet gateway, and even internet gateway we can. I am just going to show you that internet gateway thing. I can make. The internet gateway in my this particular software also. Now you see uh, this particular map. I can change to the world map. Just okay, you can see the world map now, and you don't see any station here. The map is visible, Vipinji. Uh, yes, sir. Map, yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you see, I can make an internet gateway. Right now, what I, I have shown you is without internet, radio to radio, but we can actually inject our signal to the internet so that if our internet may be working even in the in an emergency situation, that way there is nothing wrong in utilizing the internet. So that's called a radio to radio gateway. Just, I'm going to show you a small thing. Okay, let, let me connect. Okay, uh, it is. I have to initially stop sharing, then only it will work. Action. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to share. When you share this thing, you can see something else different now. So you can see on the map, there are lots of stations popping up from different places, from USA, from Europe, from India. Then you can go to Japan, Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia. So all these, some of the stations are, you can see one person walking here, one Russian here. And he may be not connected to internet. He may be carrying his radio in his pocket. And there is an internet gateway, ham radio internet gateway, through which he is feeding his information to the other person. So that way, um, I get to see him on my map locally here. And this is a map which is not Google map, of course, but we, we have access to Go Google map also. In fact, we can integrate Google art to our this particular technology. Suppose you want to zoom, zoom in. Sorry, when I share this screen, uh, I cannot click. Clicks are disabled here. So you can see, uh, I, I see a whole lot of stations and uh, my mouse is not working, sorry. Share mode come naked, this mouse. These are stations appearing through internet gateways. Some are connected to internet, some are not connected to internet. So that's how we last, it is called last mile connectivity. So we have the technology, it's called DZ Peter. In fact, International Space Station has a DZ Peter. And uh, using that DZ Peter, I can remotely transmit my information to other part of the world. So if my, my line of sight signal, for example, 
began process relay station can cover only a particular radius of area in case of short distance frequencies but if i want to send my signal to say hyderabad then i can or bangalore or guwahati i can utilize the international space station dg peter international space station has a dg peter digital repeater activated that is on a frequency we know 145.825 megahertz so all these things we learn when we get a amateur radio license uh, so uh, let me stop this sharing because my mouse is not working here when i okay uh, now let me again go back to my powerpoint i have not shown any powerpoint So you see, uh, uh, what I was doing now is one radio connected to the laptop, then other radio is not connected to the laptop. So the radio which is connected to the laptop and the laptop which is connected to the internet, that is making the gateway. So that way we can utilize, actually that way we can utilize the internet for our own particular uh, tasks that we want to perform um, for our experimentation. So that capability we radio amateurs um, have gained through our experimentation and we stop this and now you may be curious uh, to know exactly how uh, if if i uh, if you want to become a radio amateur how to go about it so in briefly i am telling you it's 520 already uh, let me again share the screen So uh, ham radio is for learning the radio communication skills, and it can obviously be utilized during uh, during emergency situation. Ham radio for disaster management. So. So ham radio, amateur radio is a two-way worldwide communication system maintained by private individuals. These individuals have a passion for radio communication for which they establish their own two-way radio communication system entirely with personal effort. So when I started back in 1983, nobody told me to become a ham or a radio amateur. It is because of my personal interest. I become a ham because I, I am simply interested in radio communication, nothing more than that. So that way, I wrote a book in 1986, uh, actually. This book I wrote in 1986 when I was preparing for my radio communication license. Nowadays, we guide people to become radio hams, radio amateurs. But our technology actually becomes so readily available to the people, you know. Uh, technology is so easily available. Pick up. People have, have nowadays become a little bit lazy in learning things. They want to do everything very easily but in our days we wanted the the <clears throat> uh, wanted to learn on our own so we uh, we put our own effort in learning but that uh, unfortunately is missing in our society from our mindset but that is not missing in other countries like europe america or you if you go to far east uh, uh, japan malaysia thailand indonesia you'll find a lot of experimenters uh, out of their curiosity they have been learning now they have to get a license uh, for which they have to uh, read the theory then a little bit of practical training if someone near to the person knows about amateur radio or some club like our began to start radio theory and practice we can provide training then licensing licensing is not done by began to start licensing authority is uh, ministry of communications ministry of communications and you have to apply to the Ministry of Communication for the radio communication license to set up your personal two-way radio communication station. So you need some individual expertise. So it is a tool to learn new technologies, unlike just user of a technology. Uh, like our smartphone, we are user of a technology. But this radio, we, we are using this to learn the technologies. So we need to get trained in a little bit of radio and electronics as per the syllabus devised by the government. 
So there are, this is a hundred marks exam. It's a one hour and two hour exam. Any person who is 12 year and above can appear. And if he or she passed the exam, uh, clears the exam, uh, he can get a license from the Ministry of Communications. It is a lifetime license for which we have to pay only rupees, uh, 2000 rupees, a lifetime license. So license, uh, uh, license looks like your, just like your, any personal uh, license, for example, uh, this is this is my uh, this is my license uh, personal license renewed up to 2049 so with this i carry this license when i um, get, get, carry my radio with me so that someone may ask me a policeman may ask me that you are carrying a handheld equipment walkie talkie wireless device do you, why are you using it so our because in our country it is not not as much proliferated unlike other advanced countries so we need to carry our license all the time if someone asks us whether we are actually authorized to use the radio. Then amateur service means a service of self-training, intercommunication, technical investigation carried on by amateurs, that is the persons duly authorized under these rules, interested in radio techniques solely with a personal limb without any pecuniary interest. Of course, when we communicate on the radio, we don't discuss business. saman uh, Mm, business ke liye isko use karna allowed nahi hai. That is not allowed in amateur radio. That is the government regulation prohibits. Then we cannot transmit music. One way music, I can play, I may know to play a guitar or I may know to sing a song. But unlike FM broadcast stations, uh, I just cannot tell one of my friends that abhi me tumhe ek gana suna raha hum, gana sun lo. That I cannot do. That is for that FM broadcast stations are there. If you are a good singer, you go to the FM broadcast stations, they will broadcast your song. But ham radio is not for transmitting music. Then ham radio is not for reading out news. I, I, can, I cannot read something is happening here. Basant Kuzme, Ye Ho Gya, Ye Ye Ho Gya. And I am reading this, that 10 other hands that I cannot do. Then uh, official work, we cannot do. Ye file, I have room number 3, I have sent file to the file. That is not allowed, illegal. That is government is uh, uh, prohibiting us, otherwise nothing as such. If government allows then everything we can do. Government doesn't allow that. <clears throat> For that mobile phone is there and uh, telephones are there. Then this is the tsunami when I communicated. I talked to the lady from Hyderabad you saw when I contacted with Hyderabad uh, uh, before the start of the uh, lecture. Uh, I contacted one ham from Hyderabad and she was the one when she was in Andaman and Nicobar when uh, tsunami of Ayatha tsunami happened. That time I was able to communicate to uh, Andaman using my radio and this news is being picked up by the media because uh, hota hai ki when people think ki ham radio it is only for emergency communication. In normal time, pe iska koi use nahi, nahi. it is not like that. But only people come to know about it. We are, we are actually, uh, we get a chance to uh, to actually self promote our activity ki ye dekhiye hum log ye jo aap log nahi kar pa raha hai hamara radio se kar raha hu so ye important hai matlab ye jo system maintain karna important hai kyunki you see a police official doesn't handle messages for third party and in emergency situation agar koi ek doctor ham hai agar ek police official ham hai ek military official ham hai because we have some common frequency so we can easily a person third party information third party information allowed only during emergency not as may kisi third party ke liye suppose may ham hu suppose arvind ji ham hai or nidhi ji ham nahi hai so agar nidhi ji uh, arvind ji suppose nidhi ji agar lucknow se hai or arvind ji suppose lucknow mein hai or may radio se baat karke nidhi ji ye mujhe bol nahi sakte ki uh, sandeep ji uh, mera ye ek message hai ओ अरविंद जी को रेडियो से ये बता दीजिए कि मेरा अंकल उधर जा रहा है ट्रेन से 9 बजे पहुंचेगा दैट इज थर्ड पार्टी मैसेज सो इन इंडिया थर्ड पार्टी कम्युनिकेशन इज नॉट अलाउड बाय द गवर्नमेंट दैट इज इलीगल सो दोस थिंग्स वी हैव टू रीड टू पास द एग्जाम सो इन द एग्जाम व्हिच इज अ मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन आंसर दिस इज इन भूत भूत आर्ट पे भी हम लोगों ने कम्युनिकेट किया था विज्ञान प्रसार से फिर वो आपका सुनामी पे भी किया था भूस पे भी किया था भूस आर्ट पे का टाइम पे फिर ये जब उत्तराखंड पे फ्लाड आया था तब भी किया था 
ये एनडीडीवी ने उसका कवरेज दिया था क्या होता है कि इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन पे लोगों को पता लगते है कि हेम रेडियो बोल के कुछ है जिससे बाकी लोगों को कम्युनिकेशन नहीं हो रहा है हेम रेडियो कर रहे लेकिन ये इतना आसान एक्चुअली है नहीं लोग जितना सोचता है कि इट इज वेरी इजी टू एस्टाब्लिश ए कम्युनिकेशन नेटवर्क ऑन आवर ओन इज ए वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड कम्बरसम जो जॉब which for which we need certain degree of competence and expertise so that that we gain through our experience kyunki abhi mujhe there are don't contact karne ke liye kaun sa frequency use karna padega from my experience i have to learn agar kisi ko ek without trained ek aadmi ko a person if given a radio he would not able to do anything he would just blindly sit in front of the radio now one of the multifaceted benefits it is uh, empowering people in specific branch of practical science it is a practical science do it yourself science our engineers don't learn practically anything today i re read a news uh, in the internet it is saying our in engineers who passed out of engineering colleges they don't have the even employment skill also they need to be employed means employable jo skill employment ke liye hona chahiye technical wo hota hi nahi so after graduating some some engineer is becoming a, becoming a procurement manager procurement manager in a company he is doing so he is actually underemployed because he is he has not learned anything practically so amateur radio provides an opportunity to learn something practically so people, very few engineers will be there because of their passion they may be learning unfortunately uh, our situation is not like that we are yes make in india we have to do it but uh, it's a long way to go it's a long way to go because we don't have our adequate industrial infrastructure in our country agar if i am an engineer after passing out of my engineering college i cannot dare to start a company to build a radio like this and this radio uh, some other country is building for me so i am using it because i am getting it at a cheaper cost and there is no manufacturer here no because nobody needs it very few people need it if there are one lakh people need this then someone would definitely come up with an industry and even that if that is being supported by the government so all those things government should i think think about so that we give our uh, means this thing encouragement to the young generation the engineers budding technocrats to come up with their own technology build this in our country instead of importing from other at a low cost but that's a far flung possibility uh, according to me but still i hope we can do it make in india we can do it so through amateur radio we can imbibe an inter interest in art and science of radio communication technology as well as electronics and as a do it yourself activity we should incorporate it to the cbse and ncert because you see in japan every every school has a radio club amateur radio club and they have an extra curricular activity in their class because in japan you will see the highest number and they are the advanced country in electronics and the highest number of amateur radio operators can you believe 5 million ham radio operators you just google number of amateur radio operators in japan will in a small island probably you will find i am not sure about the number probably you will find 4 to 5 millions of people <laughs> having radio licenses we have 1.2 billion people having license probably by 15 20000 or persons out of whom very few are active and because of the this this charisma from society for example my family may not like this activity uh, so that may be a hindrance or someone may not like it so there are many kind of matlab kya bolte antagonistic things the experimenters the tinkerers uh, the passionate radio communicator has to face and has to go through so and if one get a license Uh, we create a pool of emergency radio communication volunteers we train many people in uttarakhand 33 people have licenses in uttarakhand and they came from 13 districts of uttarakhand they got their licenses even getting a license in delhi is a needs a lot of effort during those days now it has become very easier of course and ministry of communications is now now it is very very friendly to radio amateurs because of the effort of many radio clubs and societies they know that it is necessary for the society earlier days job we hum jab exam dene ke liye jata hu us tarah aapko kyun license chahiye aapke paas phone hai na aapko ye kyun chahiye to ye kyun sahi aapko batana hai so it is up to us to exert ki ha mujhe sahi hai i want to communicate on my own that's sahi mujhe experiment karna hai so those things now 
Ministry of Communication came to know because of many activities happening actually in India in promoting ham. Began to is obviously doing it. So you see, these are conventional modes of communication. Uh, jo landline phone, mobile phone, internet. It is all maintained by professional service providers. Then police ka pas we have police, armed forces, paramilitary forces, fire department, security personnel. They are they are using it for their own own purpose, official communication. That is not ham radio. Ham radio is an educational activity. Now how to go about it? Anybody who is 12 years, Barasal Joh, you can qualify for a license by, by appearing for an exam, MSR station operator's license. Ye license uh, bhi log le sakte hai, jiska is Barasal hai, or Barasal se upar hai. There are two categories of license, or is me kya hai ki mm, ye jo sar, saralsansar.gov.in website hai, is me hum logo ko register karna hai. With our all information, you have to register and uh, guidance hai is me. We can share this PowerPoint also with you, PDF file. Uh, online apply karna hai. Now it is online. Online application is mandatory. There are two categories of license: restricted grade and general grade license. Uh, exam fees, sorry. Exam fees hundred rupees hai. Dono grade ke liye. So ye actually ek individual activity hai. Ki exam fees kyu? Isliye hai ki Ministry of Communications hamko ek privilege de raha hai. They are giving us a privilege, allotting us a lot of frequencies. For example, uh, if you if you see, okay, let me show it later to you there are some monitoring stations uh, here in you can see there are one two three four western regional headquarter mumbai northern regional headquarter delhi southern regional headquarter chennai eastern regional headquarter kolkata yes harajo offices hai ye ministry of communications ka hai and you have to apply any one of these headquarters or These are the centers Ahmedabad, Bhopal, Mumbai, Nagpur, Raipur, Azmir, Dehradun, Gurakhpur, Jalandhar, Jammu, Lucknow, New Delhi. So these are the centers. These are the actually monitoring stations. There are wireless monitoring stations all across India. Uh, and these monitoring stations main job is to monitor the different radio frequencies. For example, someone may be doing some mischievous things in some radio frequencies. Uh, which is not uh, has not come to uh, to the light. So these monitoring station all the time monitor different frequencies. They have scanner radios, so you, you cannot do something illegal. If you do something illegal, they will catch you. They will find you where you are. Through direction finding technology like the these yagis I have, they also have the yagi antenna and beams and triangulation. They can find a person if someone transmits without a license. They can find him and catch him. So that is illegal. So these are the monitoring stations where you have to apply for the exam and appear for the exam and pass the exam. So it needs sometimes individual effort and sometimes if a club, Vigyan Prasar Network of Science Club, if it introduces, for example, CBSC introduced uh, ham radio. This is a CBSC guidebook, a CBSC uh, book on uh, disaster management. Uh, it, it introduced ham radio after the tsunami when they came to know that uh, emergency situation pe, these radio amateurs can help the society, the people, the third party people. Uh, so they thought that it is important uh, for people to learn it and appear for the exam. So the very small uh, means one or two um, paragraph they have incorporated into this book. So that is not enough to pass the exam, this particular chapter alternative uh, communication system. So this particular chapter they have introduced, but it has very little about ham radio, very little. There is nothing, no syllabus, nothing. They have just uh, provided it, an information about me uh, that I am capable of uh, communicating to Andaman and Nicobar Island uh, with my own uh, home station. Because I was operating for 20, 25 days continuously, both from my office, began Prasar, and both, both from my house. Because it is my personal interest, I use my radios. So uh, that way, uh, they also came to know, and CRT also came to know, and they in incorporated it into the syllabus, little portion. But I think 
present uh, education policy under the present education policy government should make it uh, as an extracurricular activity uh, in the cbsc schools in electronics and radio clubs so that the students get the license get the training the science teacher get the training and after the science teacher get the training and the license establish a radio club if i can establish a radio station in my house why cannot a school can establish a radio station in their school so a school can establish an amateur radio station and our whole all uh, schools should be networked by these radio stations so that is a very interesting proposition i only dream about My practical feasibility i have no idea so these are the locations where exams are conducted so examination consists of two parts basic electronics a and part b radio regulations then restricted grade examination consists of 25 questions these all questions are multiple choice question uh, not uh, descriptive question in our days uh, we have to write essays actually two three page essays on a particular topic uh, we have to write but nowadays it is all mcq just select the correct answer and there you go you pass the exam nowadays it is very very easy to get the license by appearing for the exam and answering those multiple choice questions mcqs so there are two grades if you want to go for general grade there are some privileges like power for example with my high power station uh, i can use 450 watts of power uh, if i have a general grade license but if i have a restricted grade then i can use only 50 watts so those privileges government uh, keep different for different grades of licenses for restricted grade the maximum marks will be 100 and candidate must secure at least 40% in each section and 50% in aggregate for a pass so it is very easy to get 50% in an exam for general grade maximum marks will be 100 a candidate must secure at least 50% in each section and 60% aggregate for a pass in addition a candidate shall have to pass both morse code of course uh, it is something different technology i have shown you digital text messaging but manually also probably in some exam or uh, movies you saw people using uh, this type of keys this is this is a morse key and this this is a skill actually we can transmit a message uh, using this key so that if you want to go for a general grade license what happens uh, when i communicate using a long distance set my voice my voice pitch and pattern amplitude my voice modulation uh, may be different from another person and this amplitude varies and accordingly the modul modulation when i modulate to the microphone the signal strength of the transmission through ionosphere our transmission takes place through not through satellite it, it is like the short wave broadcasting stations uh, the radio stations uh, there is an invisible layer actually uh, above earth at at a height of 90 km up to 600 km it is called ionosphere so ionospheric layer it is a charged layer and and it depends on the sun spot cycle and astronomy people know what the sun spots are astronomy astronomers know what the sun spots are uh, wh why sun spots appear and those sun spots are actually very very necessary for us radio amateurs because when there are more sun spots there is more solar activity that is more solar storm but solar storm is not actually very favorable for the electronic circuitry or even even some ground establishment also electrical grid network or maybe some uh, your satellite communication satellite so they can uh, damage the electronic circuitry if there is a solar storm so but at the same time if sun spot number increases it is not necessary that solar storm can happen only when there are more sun spots even when the solar minima solar minima means uh, there is a 11 year cycle of sun spots every 11 year it changes for example last 11 year more than 11 year solar minima solar minimum very few even sometimes zero sun spot not a single sun spot was visible on the solar disk so that time what happens there is no sun activity flare activity to charge the ionospheric layer that is at a height of 90 to 600 km 
so if there is not enough solar activity the ionosphere doesn't get charged and if it is more charged there is more possibility of these radio signals getting reflected to other parts of the world that is why we radio amateurs wait for um, a good sunspot activity now sun spot activity is increasing it is increasing and now there are more radio amateurs being heard from different countries so you can see the this map let me let me just stop this strike here uh, you can see this map this is the world map radio amateurs world map and here you can see there are different prefixes actually i will show you like uh, my prefix is bu2 so if someone is bu2 uh, you can see it is i cannot take it more closer i cannot take it probably it is visible uh, so uh, you can see it is bu bu is india then uh, ap is pakistan then 4s7 sri lanka then bu4 bu4 is andaman and nicobar island then bu7 bu7 is your uh, lakshadweep island then suppose something jt jt to jv this is mongolia so all these prefixes uh, this map we keep uh, in front of us so that if we forget but if we operate regularly you know uh, if we operate regularly uh, then we can we can actually uh, immediately identify the station if a station from sri lanka transmits uh, i i don't have to ask him he will see uh, say this is four sierra seven these are called phonetics phonetics means suppose i want to say my name uh, sandeep sandeep if i say sandeep to a russian uh, my name is sandeep uh, s a n d e e p uh, he may not able to write it so i may say my name is sandeep like sierra alpha november delta echo echo papa sandeep then he will write s a n d w e p so sandeep so that is phonetics so phonetics is not in code it is actually to simplify the communication so we are getting accustomed to our uh, communication so if i say i am operating from delhi new delhi my voice may not be clear at the other end so from hyderabad Mm, whom i contacted now uh, varti prasad her her name is varti prasad and she is a promoter of ham radio in india and her call sign is vu to rbi so she says her call sign victor uniform to romeo bravo india i say my call sign victor uniform to mike uniform echo so there is only one rbi in vu to romeo bravo in india and there is only one vu to mike uniform echo all over india there may be four sierra seven mike uniform echo someone some Pakistani may be there, four Sierra seven Mike uniform echo may be there, but it is like a car number plate. You see, when we travel in airplane, outside the airplane, it is written V T dash something, V T. And pilot, when we listen to sometimes pilots also, so the pilot will say my call sign is Victor Victor Tango, uh, Victor Tango dash Tango Tango Charlie. Suppose Victor Tango dash Tango Tango Kilo. So the air traffic control. then we'll ask the pilot confirm with your sail call they have a technical selective call kyunki koi aadmi ek pilot ka awaaz nikal ke air traffic ko misguide kar sakte hai so they have a digital technology like our amateur radio also uh, to identify that particular aircraft so they, he will press a button and the uh, identification will come on the radio display of the air traffic similarly we use morse code so this is manual technology it is the start of the digital technology actually so that we uh, personal hems uh, learned and in our days when i started i started with a small transmitter of the size like this only i i didn't have a big transmitter like this only after getting my job i bought these radios so i used to talk to uh, the people in delhi hems in delhi from my college room uh, way back in 1989 i was in hostel and i used to transmit with a morse key like this and other person in delhi i have many friends in delhi senior friends 65 70 year old friends they used to operate radios in the middle of the night 
and I used to talk to them because my transmitter didn't have voice. I'm going to show you uh, how it sounds. Suppose I want to tell my name. It is called Morse code. Morse code is 186 year old technology, <clears throat> but these radios. Uh, Sandeep says. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm so. Uh, okay. So suppose, yeah, suppose A. Dida, Dida, this is A. A. B. So these things we remember by listening to the tone. It is not dot there, something like that. Dida, 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 it is A. Da di 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 da di di da di di b. So it has some rhythm. So that is also interesting. And we collect cards. For example, if I con uh, contacted a person traveling on a ship, you see this is a ship which which I contacted long back, long back in 1994. And that uh, ship's captain sent me this card, this card. And after uh, internet, I I was looking for this person. Unfortunately. And that person is no longer there, but his card is with me. But I came to know that American uh, sailor, uh, he is already dead. He is already dead. He has gone, but his card is with me. So uh, that's another. This is your Stern Command Radio Club. It's a military club, ham radio club in Kolkata. Okay, so uh, that that's all about. I think I have just in in a nutshell so so new everything and. Probably we can go for interactive session, Bipinji. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful session. It was okay. really great to have an explanation with the demonstration, and I'm sure that the viewers and our participants really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, sir. There are many questions uh, in the comment section. We are taking a okay. few of them. And the very first question is uh, that, uh, sir, I want to... Uh, to be an a ham zone, could you please suggest some good models of radio sets and antennas? Uh, no, if you immediately ask uh, for a model or antenna, that should not, I, I would not, uh, 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 I, I would suggest you not to ask this question because your first step is to go for appearing for the exam and clear the exam and pass the exam and study the books. Study the books, books, of course, if you, if you are interested, you can write to me. Nidhiji, you can give uh, give me my email ID. I'll send a PDF. So yeah. one book is this one. And so initially you have to study. So the price of the equipment comes much later. If you uh, ask me a model, then I can give you a lot of model. This is this is a Baofeng model. Then this is a Yasu, Yasu model. Then uh, this is a Canwood model. Then you can keep on asking, and I can give you lots of models and models available. But not these are not made in India, of course, because there are not many people buying this. So I think your question you should only ask after appearing for the exam, after passing the exam. Thank you. Okay, so, so his next question is uh, that without using that physical ham apparatus, is there any app on which we can practice uh, these ham uh, things? Yeah, this you can communication. Find yeah, you can find lots of self-study material on the internet. Just Google amateur radio study material. You'll find a lot. And uh, app also you can download on your American radio. Really, and many other uh, societies have developed apps for multiple choice questions to practice. So those apps are there. You can definitely download those apps to learn the electronics you need to learn to pass the exam. Sir, yeah. we are sharing your mail yeah. ideas. There are many people asking um, about the books and many other things regarding this okay. uh, ham radio. Yeah. Sir, the last question okay. I'm taking that how amateur radio is regulated in India, the practice, how it is regulated in India. Uh, it regulated means, uh, regulation means uh, the rules and uh, rules uh, defined by the government, Ministry of Telecommunication, Department of Telecommunication. So the how, how means uh, you, uh, they will give you the, uh, rules and regulation, and I can also give you the rules and regulation that are uh, that are uh, in place at this moment. So you just have to read those rules and regulations and follow those. Rules so there rules. is no agency who, who used to monitor that the people are following those Mon rules. Mon or... Yes, they, they are, that is what I told you. Now the wireless monitoring stations run by the Ministry of Communications. So they, okay. they, there are agencies in that those particular locations I have already listed. Mm -hmm. 27 monitoring stations, their main job is to listen to 
the radio am not only radio amateur radio amateur listening is their least priority they have other channels uh, which are more important for them to monitor so they keep on monitoring all the frequencies for example they have radios and they can uh, keep their radios in scanning mode for example if i keep my this radio in scanning mode you see it is in scanning mode okay it is in scanning mode so uh, whenever there is a signal the radio would stop if there is a voice or signal the radio would stop so they keep the radio radios in scanning mode and monitor all the signals okay thank you so much sir for the wonderful session now uh, we will surely have one uh, hands on session on ham radio one day uh, now moving towards the end of the session today i am inviting sachin sir for the formal vote of thanks okay thank you, thank you nidhi madam aur <clears throat> आज का जो टॉपिक था ये सच में हमारे लिए एक बहुत जरूरी टॉपिक है क्योंकि डिजास्टर के समय और आपदा प्रबंधन के समय हेम रेडियो का जो इम्पोर्टेंस है वो हम सबने कई बार उसे महसूस किया है जब सुनामी आता है या फिर और कुछ भी आपदाएं आती है तो जहाँ इंटरनेट कम्युनिकेशन पावर फेलियर सब हो जाता है तो उस समय हम हेम रेडियो पर ही डिपेंड करते हैं कि हम दुरस्त लोगों से कॉन्टेक्ट कर सकें और लोगों की जान बचा सकें तो इसके लिए संदीप सर काफ़ी सालों से इसमें अथक प्रयत्न कर रहे हैं अथक पढ़ाई इन्होंने की है और काफ़ी इन्होंने वर्कशॉप्स किए और आज उनके संभाषण से हमें काफ़ी कुछ सीखने मिला है तो संदीप सर का तो सबसे पहले दिल से धन्यवाद कि आपने ये अपना समय निकाला और इतना अच्छा हमें सेशन दिया कि जिसमें आपने खुद करके भी दिखाया और आपका संभाषण भी हुआ इस कार्य के लिए टीम विपनेट जिसमें नीति मैडम विपिन जी और पवन जी हमारे साथ लगातार सहयोग में रहते हैं और उनका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अरविंद सर जो टीम विपनेट के प्रमुख है और हमारे निदेशक महोदय डॉक्टर नकुल पराशर जी जिनके गाइडेंस में हम लोग लगातार ट्यूसडे लेक्चर सीरीज आयोजित करते आ रहे हैं उनका भी मैं दिल से धन्यवाद करता हूँ और आखिरी में हमारे श्रोतागण जो इस कार्यक्रम को अभी लाइव भी देख रहे हैं और बाद में भी देखते रहेंगे उनके कमेंट्स बॉक्स में कई काफ़ी कमेंट्स क्वेश्चंस आते हैं और नीति मैडम ईमेल आईडी भी उसमें शेयर कर देगी ताकि वो संदीप सर से डायरेक्टली ईमेल करके भी अपने सवाल पूछ सकते हैं तो उन सभी श्रोतागणों का भी हार्दिक हार्दिक धन्यवाद और इसके साथ ही हम ये कार्यक्रम समाप्त करते हैं धन्यवाद नमस्कार